Welcome. This is the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Uh, it's June the 26th, 2023. Thanks for being here. Topics I've got on the list include news, action items, upgrade from JIRA 8 to JIRA 9, GitHub sponsors. This one we may need to just defer as a topic because I should have raised it as a question in the list before bringing it here. Uh, budget and expenses, just a summary, and then a summary that I created of various community activity. Are there any other topics you'd like to be sure we add to the agenda? I have another topic regarding LFX tooling, but we can do that at the end if you don't mind. <clears throat> oh, okay, you bet. So uh, at the end, because... At the end, because I forgot to add it to the agenda. <laughs> oh, oh, there's I, I don't feel any shame in us adding things to the agenda wherever wherever makes sense. Great. So okay, LFX tooling, any other topics we need to add to the agenda? Okay. Well then, and if we do have topics that arrive, we certainly can step forward with them. That's great. So in terms of items on the news. Uh, two days uh, two days from now, Jenkins 2.401.2 will release. Uh, thanks very much to Chris Stern as the release lead. And uh, thanks to Kevin Martins for creating the upgrade guide and the changelog. The CDF Technical Oversight Committee elections are in progress right now. There are four seats on the committee with six candidates up for up as possible candidates. You should have already received an email invitation from opavote.com uh, and if you didn't by all means you're welcome to reach out to me i can help with investigation as needed the line for voting is today say that again oleg uh, the deadline for voting is today oh oh okay thank you great thanks very much in terms of action items, we've got first ECCLA to be documented by Oleg and Alex has proposed documentation. Thanks so for that. Yes, thanks very much. And I I have reviewed it and made my comments on it. If others would like to view review it, they are welcome to do so. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Uh, review from me, from me. I will try to do it uh, tonight. Great, thank you. Just request a review because otherwise, well, I will find it. Anyway. Uh, that's okay. I can I can happily put you on as a requested review. Great. Alex, was there anything you wanted to note as part of your your work there on documenting it? Oh uh, no, not really. I mean, the easy CLA process is pretty much straightforward. Given you just click on the bots comment file of the CLA, whether it's an ICLA or CCLA, click the submit button. That's basically it. You don't need to print anything out any longer. Or I don't know, I think the old process was with GPG armoring and submitting that to the board. And that is all long gone. That is handled by the Linux Foundation. Mm -hmm. The documentation I put in place just links to the documentation from the Linux Foundation because they maintain their own documentation with screenshots guiding you through the CLA process. So I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel there. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any other items on Easy CLA? Oh, thanks a lot for doing that with us. Yeah, thank you, Alex, very much. So open action item for me, still no progress on the working group's transition or retiring the Chinese Jenkins site further than it's already retired. It has already been removed from the header. So there isn't a Chinese selection here any longer. However, um, the site is still available. I believe it's at ZH. Yes, so, so we haven't taken the site down, but we also haven't received any new bug reports for the outdated install documentation that's a, that's visible there. So I think already this first step has been a positive. And then I've still got the action, uh, an active 
an action item to archive the governance meeting notes. Uh, no progress there, sorry. This one, the retrospective on signing, I've started detailing the timeline and uh, others are welcome to contribute. I've realized the timelines are actually two different timelines, one for MSI and WAR and one for PGP signing for RPM and DEB. And they they have different they had different sets of problems and potentially different solutions, but I'm going to capture them in this single single document. Any questions or concerns there on those action items? Okay, then next upgrade from Jira eight to Jira nine. Alex had noted that Jira eight will be end of life later this year and that we're using JIRA 8 for issues.jenkins.io. So I submitted a ticket to the Linux Foundation asking to schedule an upgrade, and they have proposed step one of the upgrade will happen on July 6, with an up to two hour outage for the database upgrade. My thought was the week of that week of the first full week of July is a good choice because in the US, at least a number of people will take time off for the Independence Day holiday. So my thought was, and they've, they'll do it Pacific time, Pacific time afternoon. I think it's 2pm Pacific. So after well after working end of working day in Europe. Any questions or concerns about the JIRA 8 to JIRA 9 upgrade? So this is step one, a database upgrade. Uh, then they'll take later steps to perform other upgrades. Okay. Then next was, I've got a topic and maybe we should just let this one be discussed first, either in the developer list or elsewhere. But what I saw was an article on Newstack that talks about uh, GitHub now allowing organizational donations to project to open source projects. And I wondered, is this something we should consider investigating further for Jenkins and finding a way to allow organizational donations from GitHub to be deposited into the Linux Foundation LFX account where we track our funds? Uh, and, it's not uh, that easy to do. Ah, okay. Um, so we can definitely configure GitHub sponsors, and most likely this is something we should do. Uh, but uh, GitHub sponsors, uh, uh, he is working only with, uh, uh, I forgot the name of the service, uh, but yeah, there is uh, an account we need to create, and this account would need uh, to be created on behalf of uh, uh, the LFX uh, charities, so basically the organization, oh, it's Stripe account. So basically uh, GitHub sponsors, uh, he uses Stripe as a backend. And then somebody, most likely the Linux Foundation, would need to somehow transfer the money from the Stripe account uh, to the Linux Foundation. And uh, that first, I'm not so it's uh, really simple from the standpoint of uh, the US law because uh, LF Charities is non-profit and uh, the Linux Foundation is for profit. Uh, so most likely there is something else that would be needed. Ah, okay. So, well, so I mind, think you oh, go ahead, Alex. Do you mind if I add a few thoughts to that? Yes, please. <clears throat> GitHub supports the concept of fiscal hosts for finance stuff. So you don't really need an personal bank account to transfer the money to. As far as I am aware, the Linux Foundation on the CNCF uses Open Collective as fiscal host to, I don't know if they use GitHub sponsors, but at least they have a fiscal host at Open Collective that possibly could be used similar to for the Jenkins project. But Open Collective is on GitHub sponsors. No, no, I mean, it, GitHub transfers the money to the Open Collective account. For example, if we enable Jenkins for GitHub sponsors, the money would then go via GitHub sponsors to the Open Collective account of the Linux Foundation, which acts as fiscal host. So the money doesn't go to anyone's personal bank account. 
Mm, yeah, it could be done. Well, basically, uh, the tricky part for us is uh, whatever we can uh, figure it, Stripe uh, or Open Collective, it's still to get them on our account on LFX. And then the other problem, as we learned hard way, is to actually use this money because the process so far has been quite complicated every time we tried it. So the question is whether we actually want full integration or whether you would probably set up our own, let's say, Open Collective account, uh, or Stripe account, and actually keep uh, some cash uh, there. Because, for example, when you talk about uh, established distributors so that can wait for a few months until the money are reimbursed, uh, okay, but uh, if you talk about, uh, let's say, interns uh, from Ukraine, uh, stipends, and so definitely can wait, uh, wait for several months, I think that we cannot go with a living foundation at the moment. So, Oleg, I think you're one of the concerns you're voicing is the difficulty of getting funds out of the Linux found LFX crowdfunding. I agree that's difficult. I was worried more about getting funds into the Jenkins project. Uh, yeah, in some... I think is uh, that it's difficult to every time uh, we do something specific like Google Summer of Code, mm -hmm. it uh, requires so much plumbing that for small donations it just makes no sense. So let's say it's several hours of work, uh, and if it's for transferring uh, let's say fifty bucks uh, from the Open Collective account, it's not something that I would like to do. And I guess. Uh, so this concern. So if you have a kind of stable cash flow going through the system, it's one story. If no, well, I would just stage uh, this money as a standalone uh, treasury and use it uh, when convenient. So Alex, did 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 you were your were your comments? Understood. And is there more that you wanted to note on it? I'm not sure that I'm understanding in detail yet yeah i think i get alex concern maybe i don't know if there's an actual demand to use github sponsors from our side like i haven't seen anyone requesting that we should enable that yet so i'm not sure if there's a demand but on the other hand i don't really track our um crowdfunding profile within the linux foundation so i don't know if anyone regularly donates there so yes, yeah we have uh, a few regular contributors and we also have episodic uh, one-time uh, contributions, so that are quite big ones. Uh, so right now, uh, the LFX crowdfunding kind of works. I mean, we definitely receive more money there than we spend. Well, maybe except uh, this big uh, expense report from Mark. Uh, but uh, yeah, the thing is uh, that, again, we don't know how many people are ready to go to the Linux Foundation service, register there, then put their credit card on, uh, while GitHub sponsors to be quite excited. And uh, yeah, my good thing is that if we had GitHub sponsors as default or as an alternative option, uh, reference and sponsors file, it would help us to drag in some uh, money. Yeah, so I, I think what I'm hearing is based on based on no observed demand and i agree that i don't see any observed demand and the challenges associated with it we table it we uh no no further plans for now um can can reconsider in the future alex does that that work for you if we were to detect that someone needs wants to sponsor us through github sponsors today we could point them to lfx crowdfunding and say hey pay it there yeah i think we're already doing that okay if, if i remember if i remember correctly the sponsors file and github points to um crowdfunding at least okay. for jenkins core yes so, yeah uh, this on the jenkins core uh, at some point we agreed that we don't want to put it uh, uh in dot github uh, because yeah, historically we have maintainers uh, who have set uh, up their own uh, funding uh, channels. So, and uh, when we were setting it up, uh, sponsors on GitHub uh, basically didn't work as override. Uh, so maybe now they fixed it, but initially we set it up just for a few repositories. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Great.
All right, then I is my audio a bit terrible. I'm I'm having difficulty hearing you, Oleg. A little bit. <laughs> Sorry, I will try to find uh, another headphones. But I think the topic is is settled. Then anything else on that topic before we go to the next? Okay, so, and I, I think it may have been Bruno's actually microphone that was injecting yes. some noise. So I've muted Bruno. Great. All right. So next topic then was budget and expenses. And this is just, as far as I can tell, we're up to date. The crowdfunding site shows our current budget balance. And so $8,763 US with my expense for the code signing certificate correctly shown and the expense for the reimbursement to Vodak Folonie uh, that was took us a very long time to get done. Everything it seems to be correct there. Any questions on budget and expenses? Okay, next topic then was LFX tooling. So Alex, this was a topic you had noted. Yeah, great to have Oleg here. You piloted the Jenkins project with an LFX security a couple of years ago. And I onboarded myself onto the project control center a couple of weeks ago to investigate into EasyCLA and how everything works there. And I saw that the Jenkins project doesn't really use um, LFX security, but uses it for the infra organization. And I was wondering if there were any thoughts or concerns why the we never onboarded that into the main Jenkins CI organization, given that it has heavy yeah, use in yeah. other... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, sorry. So there was actually a pilot project between us, Sneak, and the Linux Foundation. Um, it was done as a part of LFX security to do Zira. And unfortunately, this pilot project uh, couldn't go further because we were waiting on the Linux Foundation. So the story for us was that at that point, I'm not sure about now, the LFX security couldn't configure uh, uh, basic exceptions for false positives in any meaningful way. And uh, there was no facilities for organization management at all. So if you sneak directly, it was possible, but LFX security was uh, basically uh, reducing KPI to the subset that made it virtually impossible to use LFX security for Jenkins uh, without having uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of false positives. So we spent some time uh, talking uh, to LFX team uh, about that and basically we gave up because uh, the LFX team was unable to provide us with a response what we actually do uh to resolve these issues uh, at that point uh, there was no even configuration through the repository available and even now i believe that uh, there is no global configuration through dot github so if we decide to enable it uh, organization wise it's going to be a pain for uh, the maintainers so somebody still probably wants to evaluate it we enabled it for a few repositories so basically together with olivier uh, for a few infra projects where uh, that are much more contained than Jenkins plugins. But Jenkins plugins, uh, due to the original packaging, uh, which is not classic Java packaging, uh, it needs a bunch of patches uh, to work as one would expect. Thanks for sharing your insights with me. Yeah, I was just a bit surprised given Jenkins is the only project within the CD Foundation which is hasn't enabled it yet. So, but yeah, the background story makes sense to me. Yeah, so we could quite easily enable it for Jenkins Core, but not for the plugins at the moment. We could uh, revisit that, but why why couldn't it be enabled for plugins, Ole? Sorry. Uh, why couldn't it be enabled for plugins? Because every plugin uh, declares independency on Jenkins Core and other plugins. And basically, LFX security as sneak by default 
they basically take the dependencies as something that is bundled into each PI, which is not true. So basically, if you support an old core version, you get a lot of red flags for all uh, recent Jenkins security releases, for all releases of plugin dependencies, even if they are not physically bundled into the HPI file. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. So again, it's a small matter of programming for classic stick, but uh, LFX team, when they were implementing LFX security 1.x, they basically did a design for that use case and uh, we were dead in the water. And for LFX 2, two this is why we started Pilot, because we wanted to adopt it. Uh, but uh, at that point, the Linux Foundation team wasn't able to deliver on that. So, and... Uh, that full communications, uh, I still have emails somewhere, but definitely we pulled from the project and uh, it was approximately two or three months before I left LBS for 2021. So Oleg, did I capture it correctly here that if we were using Sneak directly, we could implement the the, the awareness of the, the special nature of plugin dependencies inside the Jenkins HPI files. But because yeah. of LFX Security's limited subset of Sneak, we can't do it with LF, we couldn't do it then with LFX Security. Yeah, and this is important to note because I don't know what is the state of LFX security now. Because right. Maybe they addressed some of the things. I mean, the whole LFX ecosystem has been in disarray uh, due to some events. Uh, well, uh, they lost uh, the product manager, uh, then uh, they lost uh, the CTO pushing uh, the LFX tools, then they basically had layoffs in the team, uh, etc. So I'm not sure what's the state of LFX security right now, but ultimately we are still interested in adopting it. So there is an LFX tooling working group inside the CDF that has started their meetings. Yep. Uh, Tracy Reagan, I believe, is leading that. Uh, I've been invited. I've been invited, and I missed the most recent meeting, uh, but intent plan to attend. Alex, if you're interested, I'd be happy to invite you along as well, particularly since you've got some interest in it. Yeah, I'm mean, adding up to Oleg's concerns. Uh, I think the LFX security is more than just security nowadays, given you can filter for blacklisted words and go with dependency licenses. It, feel, it feels like merging multiple tools into one. It's like no longer really focused on just the security aspect. And like Oleg said, they if they just added one single tool for scanning. So basically, it's now. Not blue jeans, but something with a similar name uh, plus sneak under the hood. Uh, but yeah, you're right that the, the scope uh, got expanded uh, a bit. Um, but yeah. So what we have isn't really uh, LFX security default because yeah, Jenkins uses custom packaging. So normally, if you do something like that, you need to teach tools uh, to handle that problem. Yeah. But yeah, that's always a problem. Okay. Alex, anything else on the topic? No, that's it. Thanks for the explanation. All right. And Oleg, thanks, thanks for the, the background. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Next topics I had were on community activity, and here my summaries may be weak, so anyone should feel free to chime in on other summaries. Artifactory bandwidth reduction project is high on my list. We met with JFrog last week and had a discussion with them. They really want us to switch so that our the mirrors we're maintaining of other repositories like Repo One and the JGit repository should stop being public because they're seeing a very high bandwidth use. Uh, however, that will require changes to our parent palms and that will require some changes to our use models. And so we're worrying about how do we do that in a way that doesn't break things um, unnecessarily. 
So it's there's there's an awful lot to happen here in order to try to comply with JFrog's request. The next piece is that in UX SIG meeting uh, uh, last week, it was agreed that the security team is going to heighten their reviews of changes to core for JavaScript and Jelly for the next two months uh, so that we can assure that we don't, to reduce the risk of having to do a security release to fix Jenkins with a, a due to a change in JavaScript or Jelly with the current activity in JavaScript and Jelly, it feels like it's a, a healthy thing. Uh, thanks to Basel, thanks to Vadek Felonier for that discussion and bringing it. Any questions on either of those two topics? No question, just a little feedback. Mm -hmm. I requested three reviews from the security team earlier the same, just three minor PRs. Nonetheless, all three PRs got the green light within hours. So oh, I think this oh, is good. A this is a positive sign that Vardex concept is working out without slowing down um, the time to merge of PRs. Very good. Thank you. All right. Next topic then was prototype JS. So in, in our efforts to remove ancient code, thanks to Tim Jacome and to Basil Crow, prototype JS has been removed as a the use of prototype js has been removed from jenkins 2.406 i believe and later and a, a optional flag has been added or an experimental flag has been added which will allow users to disable prototype completely uh, the epic is in progress there's a lot to, a lot of work to do to remove prototype from plugins before it can be removed from jenkins core uh, this, the tracking sheet shows the progress. Thanks, Basel, very much for maintaining the tracking sheet. Anything, Basel, that you want to note on prototype JS removal? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks very much for your, your efforts and for Tim's efforts on it. Uh, another upgrade is HTML unit 2 to HTML unit 3, where we've now completed the upgrades for Jenkins core for test harnesses for the plugin palm and for the plugin bill of materials there are some 250 plus pull, plugin pull requests that have been submitted that are proposing the upgrade to various plugins and there's a tracking sheet that shows how it's progressing Basil, I know you've been involved in this one. Anything that needs to be highlighted here? Well, a lot of these pull requests still aren't compiling yet, so ah. they can't. And you know, I think that we should be making sure that they compile, especially for the long tail of plugins with fewer than, I don't know, 25,000 installations. There's a lot of these that are orange meaning that they cannot be merged since they don't compile. Um, so be, it would be great to see some more work done to uh, make these pull requests pass the CI build so that the maintainers can then uh, just click the merge button without having to do any additional work to get them to compile. Got it. Okay, so the color code here, this orange is PR file, but not build passing. And then it gets promoted to yellow when the build is passing. Yeah. So below the 25,000 installation mark, there's a large amount of orange. Right. And, uh, technically it doesn't block uh, um... Uh, immigration unless it's bundled in the PCP or another framework like that, right? Yeah, although it's a liability in the sense that some future work will likely require a parent POM update, and then that parent POM update will cascade into having to fix this problem if it isn't fixed now. Right, yeah, that, that for me is the biggest, the biggest headache there is if someone doesn't do this, but then later requires a parent POM upgrade, 
they'll be stuck. They'll have to do the, the HTML unit three transition in addition to everything else that they've that might have been on their list. So some urgent security fix or whatever could be blocked simply because they we we didn't get this piece of debt. They didn't get this piece of debt resolved first. Don't think that. Well, uh, you have to imagine a security fix a bit uh, uh, where updating the parent form would be mandatory. So for me, it's rather a minor risk. Okay. But, yeah. Well, but anyway, thanks for submitting all these PRs. And then in terms of the color code, oh, right, the, the, the bluish color is hey we're just not worried about it and it, we're not worried about it because for instance four years out of date and well under 2000 installs those kind of things okay yeah that's that's great anything else on html unit three Then next item was Google Summer of Code, and it's progressing. We've got four student, four contributor projects. Uh, thanks to John Mark, Chris Stern, Alyssa Tong, and Bruno Verachten. There are organization admins. Thanks to the four mentor teams. Each mentor team has at least two mentors involved. Most of them have three. Uh, and progress is going forward. The next, the midterm presentations will be July 6, 2023. Oops, it would help if I put the right one. July 6, 2023. Any questions on Google Summer of Code? Okay, then the, the last item I had on the list was early end of life for CentOS 7. Um, it's been announced. It's been declared. It's now appearing in warnings. It will appear to... LTS users beginning with Wednesdays 2.401.2. So if they're running that old operating system, we're trying trying in multiple ways to inform them that they need to get off that thing. Any questions or concerns there? All right. Any other topics for discussion today? <clears throat> 